Well, welcome to either the first or the third edition of the Columbus Square Dance News. Now, I say first or third because most of you don't know that I tried this back in the summer of 2018. The technical challenges of putting one of these videos together meant I only made a couple of them for, well, frankly, before I gave up. It would take literally 10 to 12 hours to put just one of them together. And also, frankly, I probably wasn't very happy with the quality of the work. Well, recently I got to looking at my video equipment. It sure hasn't been used for, you know, videotaping uh, square dancers here lately. And I thought, well, what the heck, let's give it another try, what say. Upcoming events. Well, for January, mm, nothing. <laughs> There's not a thing. Nothing official, at least. I know a couple of clubs that are kind of dancing under the radar, so to speak. But there are, to my knowledge, no clubs officially dancing throughout the rest of January in the entire state of Ohio. Now, that said, let me tell you about the Clinton County Country Squares at Miami Valley. Now, they're on the calendar as dancing on January 21st. And Hoosier Corners is scheduled for January 30th, and they're in Richmond, Indiana. Now, I'm doubtful that Clinton Corners will dance, but, you know, Hoosier Corners actually did pull off a dance a few weeks ago. Ohio is still under this stupid shutdown orders, which I can barely follow all the rules and regulations, and I have no idea at all about Indiana's laws. In February, again, in Miami Valley, there's a lot of round dances at the pavilion on the schedule, and Clinton County and Hoosier Corners are on the schedule, too. Cleveland and uh, Central Ohio, there's uh, several events on the calendars, but, you know, honestly, I doubt seriously any of them are going to happen. Keep an eye on the calendar pages for all of those locations. Links to the calendars are below this video. The big conventions, Ohio, Michigan, California, South Carolina, Florida. None of them are having conventions in 2021. I honestly can't make heads or tails out of the Kentucky website. There doesn't appear to be any information there at all. And the Tennessee Square Dance site has been hijacked by some Asian pharmacy spam site if you go there from a Google search directly. Now, if you go to Tennessee's Facebook page, you can access their URL from there, and that seems to work okay, but going directly from Google, I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, Tennessee says that their show is going on in August, so I guess we'll just kind of wait and see. But what about the big one, the National Convention? This year, it's in Jackson, Mississippi. At the time of this video, everything is still a go, but again, I still have my doubts See, the convention right now is just shy of 1,300 registrations when they should be closer to 3,000 or so at this point. Uh, there's a lot of fixed expenses that they've got to pay for, and all that money comes out of the registrations. Based on what I know about the rollout timing of the COVID vaccine, I don't see Jackson happening. I don't think there's going to be enough vaccinated individuals in the country to pull this off. Based on the hesitation that I've seen local dancers in getting together with people that they know, I don't see folks champing at the bit to go hundreds or maybe thousands of miles to hang out with hundreds of other people that they don't know, that they're not familiar with. I hope I'm wrong, but to me, the math just doesn't add up. For our Sunshine page, we've had so many people who have contracted COVID. Some have really been hit hard. Others, relatively mild case. You know, I started a list of folks who I knew had it or was going through it. But the more I got to thinking about it, I, I, the more I realized, you know, if I start reading off names and I'm going to miss somebody and not include them, and, I, you know, that's not what I want to do. By now, probably all of us know at least one person uh, that's had it. Let's hope we see an end of this crap before too long. As I was putting this video together, I got an email saying that local caller Don Conrad had passed away. Don, to my knowledge, was the only challenge-level square dance caller in central Ohio. I understand he used to host dances in his home for a long time. This is sad news. I can't imagine most folks haven't already heard the news that Jerry Story passed away in December. He'd been hospitalized since Thanksgiving, and he passed away around Christmas time. Tony Oxendine set up a GoFundMe page to help Jerry's wife, Christy, take care of what has to be some unbelievable medical bills. There's a link to that GoFundMe page down below. Now, after all that, let me tell you something that'll warm your heart. Pam Quartz, call her Pam Quartz, has been waiting for a kidney for a long time. She's been undergoing dialysis for years. Now, unbeknownst to almost everyone, Bernice Davis, 
Caller Tom Davis's wife, for the last year, has been undergoing tests and examinations and medical procedures so that she can donate one of her kidneys to Pam. Now, I gotta tell you, I, I know I'm not that selfless. I'd surely be willing to donate one of my kidneys to my daughters or to my siblings, but man, Bernice's gift is one of the most generous acts I've ever personally witnessed. Good on you, Bernice, and good luck to you ladies in both of your surgeries, which are going to take place on Tuesday, January 19th, 2021. If you'd like to send them a message of support, you can do so at the Columbus Square Dance website's Sunshine page. There's a link below this video. It'll get you right there. Here in the central Ohio area, Mark and Jody Johnson were instrumental in keeping everyone informed of what's going on about square dancing and round dancing with their Cues and Tips magazine. Well, Jody passed away in November, and Mark decided the latest issue he published would be his last one. He wrote, Sorry, everybody, I just don't see how I can continue the magazine without my Jody. I may have been the brains of the outfit, but she was the heart and soul. Well, thank you, Mark and Jody, for your incredible run of publishing cues and tips. I know how much work it is to put together a publication like that, that you did it month after month, year after year. Terrific job. Well done. And we all thank you for it. Finally, as I was literally putting together this video, I got a very nice email from Nancy, and here's what it said. After reading the Sunshine page, I searched the Links page, and I found your Nothing to Do with Square Dancing page. What a total delight. I spent a long time browsing your photos and found them very relaxing and soothing compared to most of the junk on TV. <laughs> well, now, how sweet is that? Nancy, I'm really touched that you found my photos to be soothing and relaxing. That's exactly what I was going for. Thank you for the wonderful compliments. That really means a lot. Now, speaking of photos, most of you have met me with a camera hanging around my neck. Over the last three years, I've taken close to 22,000 photos of square and round answers. I've posted over a thousand videos in the same period. I'd like to be remembered as the good-looking Tom Cruise of square dancing, but I have a feeling I'm going to be remembered more for going, wait a minute, you put my picture on the internet with my tongue hanging out of my mouth. <laughs> Well, I wanted to go another direction in photography for Square Dancers. My original thought about this was to bring some form of a portable studio with me to conventions. Then, before all the dancing begins, you know, every day, I would take portraits and headshots and, you know, those kind of pictures of callers or anybody else who wanted to stop by absolutely, you know, free of charge. But taking pictures of moving targets on a dance floor is a whole different kind of animal than studio portrait photography. I need test subjects. I need to learn how to do this. Frankly, I need the practice. If you're willing to come sit for an hour or two while I play around with lighting and camera settings, well, you might walk out of there with a couple of pictures that you really like. And at no cost to you, you know, other than your time, of course. I've had a couple of volunteers so far, and they've been pleased with the results, though as much a perfectionist as I am, I think I still have a long way to go and a lot to learn. Just drop me a line if you'd like to be one of my photo guinea pigs. As I said earlier, I'll give this video news thing a try and see if I can make it work. If you have any information you'd like me to pass along, send me an email about it. Heaven knows I could use the content. Have a good month, and Lord, let us get back on the dance floor soon. We'll see you next month.